doctor is in the house. <laughs> there he is. I made it. Hey. Hey, how guys. I'm good. How are you guys? Yeah, dude. Flying. Appreciate this so much. Thank you so much for coming down. You're welcome. Sorry for the delay. My Wi-Fi wasn't, it was giving me headaches. Uh, is, is that what it's, the, the Wi-Fi, was it? <laughs> it? This time was to reboot it. Yeah, it's all good. Honestly, it's absolutely fine. Thank you so much for, for joining us. We really appreciate you You're doing welcome. this. So yeah, it's going to be good fun. Just first and foremost, sir, how do we pronounce your name? Siamak. 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 Siamak Salah. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. I'm on that one. Whatever. Yeah, Siamak. Anything. Any, oh, anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell him that. <laughs> Too late, sir. <laughs> um, so basically how this works is Jamie will give a nice little introduction about yourself uh, and then we're just going to absolutely hammer the shit out of your questions bring it and you can say whatever Ooh, you like, like as well so. I like that bring it <laughs> <laughs> right are we all ready and I'll get started absolutely Ladies and gents, today we have a very special guest. In the past 18 months or however long this has been going on now, there has been a certain group of people who have held the world together. And those are the healthcare workers trying to keep the world safe. Today's guest is not only an incredible doctor, but he has used his wonderful knowledge and the wonderful world of TikTok to spread awareness and debunk myths to his over 1.5 million followers. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the chronicles of Dr. Siamak Saleh. Thank you for having me. It's an honour being here. Uh, we really appreciate you coming down, Doctor. It's been a, I'm going to call you Doctor. I think I quite like that. It's the first time I get to use it. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I know what the answer is going to be, but I'm intrigued. How has the last 18 months been for yourself? Exhausting, to be honest. Working on the front line from the beginning, like in since March, the pandemic started here. And uh, it's it's tiring. We are having our third wave here in South Africa. Uh, the vaccination process is very slow. We have access only like 5 million, I think, out of the 50 million we have. So, wow. yeah, so, so we're gonna start vaccinating below 35 years old from 1st of, September. So yeah, so we still vaccinating like the, the elderly. But uh, so I, I escaped the reality to join TikTok for fun. It started me and my daughter making videos, bonding, and that, 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 that was in March last year. And by May, June, I realized that everybody craving uh, the answers. People messaging me, what I must take for COVID? What are the symptoms? What are the treatments? I started making videos about COVID and it was well received. And since then, I just started educating people, doing different topics. And it's not easy having two full lives, you know, like I have this full job at work and then I come home and I'm not a dancer or a singer. I can't just like put the camera on and do a few <laughs> check, check stuff, you know? So I have to study, like I have to read for like three, four hours before I make a video. But it's it's all rewarding. It's rewarding when you like, when I can educate, help people, make them feel better. So it's uh, been a rewarding experience. Amazing. I mean, it's crazy because obviously the Lions tour at the moment is in South Africa. Obviously the Cape, there was a game in Cape Town on Saturday. So it's like, I don't know why. I mean, the result was terrible. But, um, it, <laughs> um, but I think that's mental how they still went ahead with it and they're still having it in South Africa, especially if you're having a third wave at the moment. Actually, we have five levels of lockdown. We were in level four until like two weeks ago. So banning alcohol in South Africa was, is, is a huge thing. You know why they banned it here? They banned alcohol? You don't know. Nope. So when we when we go to like level five, level four, they ban alcohol because when alcohol is allowed, people drink alcohol, stab each other, fill all the ICUs, and then there's no place for COVID patients. So that's why they ban the alcohol, so the, all the trauma can come down, so we can have a space in ICUs. 
So we love it when there's, I mean, there's no alcohol. Because when there's no alcohol, nobody gets drunk, nobody stabs anyone. It's like like the world is in peace. But then once alcohol comes back, it's it's a, it's a different world. It's like, uh, yeah. I'm trying to find words and they're all <laughs> failing me completely. It's true. Like I, I, you can, I don't know if you can Google it. If people don't understand why we're banning alcohol because they don't know, like all the car accidents, drunk people walking in the road. Uh, I'm, I'm not talking about like the whole of Cape Town, but like the townships, the poorer areas. The, especially month end when you get paid, you drink. And it's not like you get mugged and stabbed. It's like family stabbing each other. Has Like you two, if you're brothers, you might get drunk and stab each other. I, I, I had patients. When they come there and they're like, they both stab, both stab each other, but then they don't know how it happened. They're like, we're brothers, we're best friends. I don't know what happened. I'm like, it's alcohol, guys. So, That's why they ban it. So they just un unbanned alcohol recently because we kind of like going down the third wave. Unbanned it. So. Oh, they should have left it. They should have just left it banned. And, but then again, obviously, you'll get people that will break the prohibition laws, won't you? And then prisons will probably start getting massively full and they stab each other in there. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I was going to ask you if you'd like, uh, other, as obviously I was going to say, if you've taught yourself anything new or learned anything new during the pandemic, obviously you've been working the entire time, but obviously TikTok was your way forward. So uh, yeah, absolutely. I think you're on 1.7 million, is it now or something? Yes. I think last night, yeah, or the, or the night before I reached 1.7. It's unbelievable. Just crazy. It's crazy. Like I was this normal person last year. Now I'm working with the World Health Organization. I was I was mentioned in the British Medical Journal, which is like one of the prestigious medical journals. I had a short clip in Good Morning America. So it's a it's a different yeah. It's it's, it's yeah. It's so cool. Busy life. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing though. <laughs> that is mental. So take us back then, sir. Has healthcare and being a doctor always been the plan for you, like since you were young, or did you want to go down a different career path before? I think when I was like 11, 12, 13, I wanted to be a civil engineer. I wanted to build houses and cool shapes. But <laughs> once, cool once shapes I became so more, more mature, <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew I want to medicine. I wanted to... I mean, people say you can help people and you can become IT and help people. You know? So, but I wanted medicine. I wanted to like save lives, um, be like the hero. I mean, and, and now living it, save when you save somebody's life, when you bring that person to life, that's like the best, best feeling ever. You're like, I did this to do like to save the life. You know, not to treat rashes and coughs and headaches. You know. <laughs> <laughs> So, did you, where did you uh, study then? Because obviously there's quite a lot of roads you can go down in the world of medicine. There's so many different avenues and things you could do within the field. Obviously, it's absolutely massive. So, where did you go to study to uh, study medicine? So, I am Persian. Yeah. I was born, grew up in Kuwait. Okay. I studied medicine in Moscow. Right. And then I came to South Africa. Wow, so yes. why, you uh, to, why, why Russia? Um, after I finished medicine, after I finished school, I applied everywhere. And Moscow State University was one of the top universities in Europe 15, 20 years ago. So, and the tuition fees weren't that expensive. I mean, we were not, a, we couldn't afford, to, I mean, I, I asked to invest in Ireland and it was like 20,000 pounds oh. that time. So, so I went to Moscow and uh, Moscow State University that was like top 50 in aquatic education that time. I don't know about now, but it was a, yeah, that's, so, so I went there. It was very cold, but <laughs> I learned a lot in life. <laughs> Sickest. And I got to see lots of uh, Champions League matches. Huh? So it was cool. Oh, so that's a big win. That's huge. <laughs> Absolutely. What was well, it? Who, who was playing there? So people ask me, have you been to Basho Theater? Have you seen this? Uh, one lake i'm like no i saw barcelona i saw ac milan i saw real madrid <laughs> absolutely incredible yeah. so, I get, so is that csk csk yeah, moscow right? spartak moscow Lokomotiv moscow oh, yeah magnificent all the football perfect 
Don't you, Jamie? <laughs> yeah, you've lost me when it comes to football. I just, I just let you two go. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, as Tom alluded in that question, you know, there's, there's so many different career paths in medicine you can go down. What was it that you chose to study? So I, I finished medicine. I did internship. And then I came to South Africa to do research in heart surgery. Oh, wow. And I was I wasn't researched, so I came. Uh, they offered me scholarship, paid my tuition fees, uh, to do heart surgery research in Christian Barnard. So, so in the in the in the place where the first heart transplant happened was in Cape Town. So the same center wow. to do research. Wow. Yes, the first heart transplant happened in Cape Town, and in the same center to do research it was I couldn't. I mean, I wanted to go somewhere beautiful and somewhere good to do my. Um, let me just close this to do my uh, research. So um, I just spent a few years doing research. And after that, I was like, nah, that's not for me. But I wanted to see patients, treat real patients, save lives. So I'm a primary healthcare provider. Yeah, I'm not specialized. I see you're not specialized. Oh, okay. No, no, no. So where I work now, I work in, a, they call it township. Let's call it, basically across the road is the murder capital of South Africa. It's a very okay. dangerous place, but I like it because we get to see everything. I've seen all kinds of traumas and that's the more opportunity to save lives, you know, like if, if let's call it more exciting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, okay, yeah. I'm not going to mention what I see, but like I, I've seen it all. Have you ever had to be like inventive then when it comes to that sort of thing? Like, have you seen things that you would not normally have seen and be like, well, how are we going to fix this? How are we going to? So, so because it's a, like a primary healthcare facility, we stabilize the patients and then we send them to like a specialized units, different hospitals. Ah, okay. So we basically need to stabilize them, intubate if needed, make sure they're okay. And then, then. That's crazy. I can, I can imagine you've seen some things. I work in a hospital myself. I, I'm nowhere near. Hell, I'm a porter. I literally just move people from A to D. And I've seen some horrendous things. So I can only imagine what you guys on the front line have seen. <laughs> Gunshots, abs. I mean, I, we, over the weekend, month end, we see at least like 100 stabs. Wow. It's a, it's a different world, isn't it? It's... it's a different world. And then if you drive 20 minutes, you see Cape Town, like the, one of the most beautiful. I mean, it is Cape Town, but it's like 15 minutes away from the city. So it's it's like different worlds. Like I'm sure if you go to Google and see like the drone footage from Cape Town, you can see like townships and this site is like heaven. So I didn't know such, such places exist. When I came here, like only realized like after like six, seven years when I had to go work in a small clinic. And I was like, okay, maybe Cape Town is not the best place for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so I um, probably uh, just realized we didn't actually, how long have you been a doctor? We didn't actually ask this, I just realized. So I finished medicine in 2005. Oh, okay. So what's that, 16 years? 16 years, yeah. Yeah, 15, 16 years. Um, have you had any people in like social situations come up to you? So like, say, for example, you're just having a drink or somebody's having a chat and it's like, oh, so what do you do? You're like, oh yeah, I'm a doctor. And they go, oh, fantastic. Because basically what I've got the problem here is my leg hurts. So, <laughs> as a, you, know, there's, you know, it's just, it's a bit red. Is there anything going on here? Like, <laughs> That's why I don't have friends. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just no, I mean, I mean, I can open my, I can open. So since since I started uh, my medical education on TikTok, every day I get messages, I get pictures, I get videos, of I get questions. I'm not even allowed to like say it, and it's crazy. And I'm like, guys, I'm not an encyclopedia, or like I'm not a. I mean, I would love to have. I I, I answer questions about COVID. I know it's like a pandemic image. I answer them. But I can't answer like 100 questions every day. So I go through them and the funny ones, I probably laugh with them and like answer them. But it's it's crazy. Like, <sighs> yeah, I bet it's just go like... see your doctor now. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be rude. So I just ignore it. Like, I mean, yeah, I try my best to answer as many as I can. But 
once you have like so many followers, it becomes a bit impossible even to answer your comments. I just had this weird ambition of you getting a video like, Doctor, Doctor, why have I got three cocks? Why have I got three? I suppose I've won. Why have I? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> okay, I, I assume I can't say anything on this. Interview, yeah, well, right? yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> whatever you want. <laughs> Maybe no, no. I, I'll, I'll do private messages. I, I, I'll screenshot some of them. Yeah. <laughs> Cover the names. Cover the names. Cover the names of it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> So obviously, you briefly mentioned we we can't talk about healthcare and especially the, within this past eighteen months and not talk about COVID. So, how has that affected your line of work? Because obviously, what you do is with trauma and whatnot. But I assume you've got a lot of COVID cases coming into where you are as well. So what what is great here is that whenever we reach peaks, we get into higher lockdown. So there is less people moving around, no alcohol. So it kind of like balances the whole thing. There'll be less trauma, more COVID, and then COVID become less and there's more trauma. So it's been balanced, but um, I'm kind of like acting in charge of my clinic for the past like seven months. And I always try to make sure that doctors are comfortable, like, like because it's difficult to work in a, such a dangerous place and at the same time have such a high workload. So I try to take the pressure off them to make sure they are not affected by what's happening outside for example but in the process i'm burnt out for the past few months mm. i'm like properly burnt out and i'm trying to cover i can imagine it's <laughs> it's not easy for anyone <laughs> no no it's not it's especially like i think it's for the old majority of healthcare workers it's it's been a difficult year and it's frustrating with all this misinformation out there COVID is a flu, there is no COVID, hospitals are empty, we take death certificates. And I mean, initially it was very difficult for me on, on TikTok, people calling me, working for Bill Gates, I'm a murderer, I want to de depopulate the planet. And I'm like, I was like, it, it, it was affecting me initially. But these days I don't even like bother. I mean, there's like, I get thousands of such messages every day. So bring it on. It's they actually boost my videos. These messages, these comments, <laughs> they boost my make it make make it more viral. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say that that is the one thing that has really bothered me, offended me, and made me feel so sorry for like doctors and stuff during this time is all these stupid conspiracy theory comments and whatnot. But how how have you dealt with it? If, is it a, do, do you just laugh it off, or you know, how, has it got to you? So I have grown a lot. I've like matured. I feel like I'm a different person when I started this whole journey. Um, initially, I used to like fight with these people. I used to argue and it, and, I, and it used to affect me, obviously. Now I realize there are three kind of people. There are people who educated and taking the vaccine and they are okay. There are people in the middle who are hesitant and they are and they're like misinformed and they are like the real anti-vax. Like earth is flat can't change my mind so these people i don't really bother about them so I'm, i try to like focus on the ones who have genuine questions if if somebody is saying like something uh, okay i don't really read my comments because i, ca I can't read like three thousand comments but if i'm scrolling and i see something rude i just block the person but otherwise i try to answer and help as many people as i can you're such a hero absolute hero inside and outside of your job um, I mean, yeah. I don't understand why people like to just fucking comment shit at people for no. And obviously, then when they get blocked, they go, "Troy, I'll make another account, mate. Fuck it, it's fine." And they'll come back again. Like boring. People are boring. Absolutely boring. Why? Why? Like, just crack on with your life. This is there's because uh, I live in Wales, and um, there's people that come with megaphones out in the city centre and like, "You're all sheep. Look at you're all sheep wearing your masks." Like, no, no, you're just an absolute moron. <laughs> basically and and i think majority of them are like misinformed it's not very difficult to find answers for these questions it takes i swear it takes like two minutes of research and you can debunk all their conspiracy theories but they say no i'm like give me your proof and then i'll listen to it a yeah. facebook link i'm like no i don't want facebook link give me a, <laughs> yeah. give me a peer reviewed article they're like what, what's what's peer reviewed article i'm like exactly there you go yeah 
So I, I realized I need to like be kind. I need to admit. I need to listen like to the genuine ones. Like you, you listen, you calmly, kind, and then explain to them. Some of them change their mind. The ones that the, the trolls, the ones that are there for fun, like, you know. Like, but I, I try. You know, like, which, <laughs> fair enough, you try. Which you know, you can't fault you for that because some people just don't want to know. I never forget when the pandemic first started, and over here, someone decided to break and burn down a five G mast because they thought that's what caused COVID. Some people are just idiots. <laughs> what you should do, yeah. then, what, um, answer, what you should do is get those comments, put them into your TikTok videos, and just go, nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, please don't. I've had that in my head all day from yeah, yeah. doing my research. I've been walking around just going, nope, nope. You know, um, I mean, I have been burnt out for the past like two months and I have, and I've had lots of drafts, in my drafts, like videos of me saying, nope, nope. So I've been using them. And if you see like the past 10 videos, each of them are like more than a million views. So they are, they do good. So I'm like, I don't, I don't have energy to make a new video. I have this video ready. Let's look for myths about this and just put it there. Obviously, we don't know. We only know how our government's been dealing with this. But I'm going to guess badly from what you were just saying, but how has it been over there for the people of like South Africa? How has your government dealt with it, or is it just not good? Next question. <laughs> 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 honestly, honestly, I don't think the government has done enough. Uh, until like recently, I used to call radio stations and I told them I want to come talk. I, I'm this person. I am first verified medical doctor in South Africa on TikTok. I have this many followers, and I want to come talk about the vaccine. And they would let me. And I've been like a few radio stations on my own doing it, but I haven't done it. I, actually, I've been saying no to most people because I mean I need mental like I need to be to recover before I can. I need to help myself first before I can help others. So there is not much happening. They're only starting now to talk about the vaccine and like debunk the myths when they should have been started like last year when the vaccine was in the process of happening. So I've been talking about the vaccine in my TikTok since June last year when the first uh, article came about AstraZeneca. So, but here it's... uh, yeah, I think the government approached me, the Department of Health, asking me if I want to be part of the project to talk about the vaccine, like now in August. Fucking insane. I mean, do you have quite a few, do you have quite a lot of supply or not? Support. Supply. So obviously, because a lot uh, of countries have not done much oh, supply. No, 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 no. We, we were waiting for the, for the vaccine that Biden is sending us. I think he's sending us like five or two million or five million vaccines. Uh, Pfizer vaccines, so we're waiting for them. So not that many, and they went from above sixty. So our first first was healthcare workers, then above sixty, then above fifty, and now above thirty five. So I think from September we're gonna start below thirty five till eighteen. But with the with the misinformation in this country, I mean, like misinformation started in the U.S. and then they come. I mean, it took it took time for them to reach here. But now everybody's like, no, I don't want to die. Vaccine kills. And I'm like, guys, just look what's happening in the US. 99% of the death are in the unvaccinated. But like, no, you fake your numbers. I'd rather risk getting a vaccine and getting something from that than getting COVID and dying from that instead. Do you know what I mean? It's worth I mean, the risk. I got the vaccine. I got the vaccine because I wasn't, okay, maybe I'm um, 40 years old, maybe a bit of higher, high risk, high-ish highest risk but then I took it because I didn't want to get a, a long term like long COVID. Two of my colleagues, one got chronic fatigue and the other one had like a mini collapsed lung. So and they were younger than me and fit. So I was like, I'm taking the vaccine. And plus I've been reading all the articles. It's like been properly studied, probably tested. It if efficacy is like proved, but anyway, we'll do we'll do our best. I'm sure you'll smash it out there, sir. I'm, I have every confidence. <laughs> so, 
obviously, as we've mentioned, you know, TikTok, it's an app that has divided the world. You know, some people love it, like myself, and other people have zero interest in it, like him. <laughs> but how did you get started on the app? Okay, so I was doing some managerial course and I had to do an assignment, like a, like I had to write like four or five pages. And my daughter came and showed me this trend on TikTok. I never had TikTok before. I had the app, but I never opened it. And I was like, this is cool, where you are like dressed normal clothes, casual, and then suddenly, boom, you're all fancy clothes. I was like, hey, I want to do this. <laughs> so I waited after my assignment. And like the next day, we tried it. She did some videos. I did some videos. And it was escape. Like, it was exactly March. We didn't have a pandemic then, but we were starting to have to implement new protocols, educating people. So it was a bit too much. So it was a good escape. And, and I'm not a social media person. My Facebook, I used to post like once every six months. And my Instagram had like six pictures. And I never ever in my life did videos. I'm like, this is fun. I can do this. And that's how it started. And my, my, my first few videos is me and my daughter doing some silly things, <laughs> trying to change clothes and whatever. <laughs> so, so what made you get started doing the medical videos then? Yeah. So when, when everybody was messaging me, asking me questions about COVID, the treatment, this and that. And I was like, if this, like, I mean, I'm getting so many messages. I used to post uh, in my WhatsApp status, like posters about COVID. And everybody used to ask me questions. I was like, I have this platform. I can use it to educate people. And my first few videos about HIV, about, uh, not HIV, about COVID. And people start, it, it, it got lots of views, went like mini viral or, or, or viral for me back then. And then um, people used to ask me questions. I used to answer them. And it was like, I was like, hey, I like this. I can like educate, help more people. And this is like where my passion met my like, met TikTok, you know, like an, an opportunity, a platform for me to do it on like a, a larger scale. And that's how it started. On, on COVID, I talked, and I talked about HIV. South Africa has the highest number of HIV in the world. Um, talked about HIV, talked about women's health. Then once I made a video about pregnancy myths, and overnight, two thirds of my followers were pregnant women. So I had to, I gained like 50,000, 70,000 from one video. So I had to like make more videos on women's health. And since then, um, majority of my followers are like, I think like 75 to 80% are females. So. Wow. Because I saw the one which was like, <laughs> pineapple doesn't instigate birth, like curry yeah, or yeah. spicy food stuff like that. It's like, but where, <laughs> like, where the hell did this all come from originally? Do you reckon it's just people making shit up? You know, it's obviously mad. Oh. Like, like... Go read the comments. Read the comments. People are swearing. I'm like, dear, if you had Kit Kat and you went to labor, would you say it was because of the Kit Kat or was it because you were left like coincident? <laughs> Phenomenal. Could work with anything. It's just, it's just mind blowing to me how people come up with how they, you know, because when I was growing up, that's, you know, what I was told, you know, yes, what things that you learn and people are like, oh, yeah, so if you eat curry, apparently, if you eat curry when you're pregnant, it makes you, you know, it helps you instigate birth. Does it? Like, really? Does chicken do that? Like, just, you know, everybody eats chicken every day. And <laughs> it's just cra it's crazy to me. Absolutely mind blowing where these myths have all of a sudden come from. But the, one, the ones that you've been doing, like, I've just blown my mind. Um, there's the the no pain no gain thing you do as well with the um, the workout stuff. Absolutely spectacular. It's, it, yeah, it makes me feel a lot better about myself. When I'm not there because in the gym there's like a certain route. Because some people I know are like yeah, you got to really go for it, you know, to be like struggling, you're dying out. But I don't do that. I don't really come out of the gym like fucking hell, I'm knackered. I was like, I feel good, mm -hmm. but like exactly, yeah, yeah. But I don't want to be at that point where you know you come out, you go, fuck, well, my leg, my leg's gone. I don't know where my leg is. Is it over there somewhere? Do you know what I mean? Like just. <laughs> People, but that, yeah. that's also where I get most hate in my myth videos. They are, they are the, they are my viral videos, but also because imagine you growing up with this myth, and then I come out of nowhere telling you, "Hey, that's a myth." They're like, "Who are you?" It's 
spicy food causes ulcer. I'm like, okay, bring me the proof. No, it causes ulcer. I'm like, where's the proof? There's no, there's no like, there's no medical proof of it. But because people like grow up with these things or had an experience, maybe they had gastritis, for example, which is also gives you like a pain there. They think it's an ulcer. So it's, it's, so I, I, I just put my explanation in the comments and I answer the first few questions. Then I'm like, yeah. I'm backing off. Yeah. They can, one, they one can, video. my answers are there. You can read them. You can explain. And, and I have followers who help me explain. And I've built many communities. And sometimes it go like, it's like a mini community of people talking about educating each other, giving, telling each other. Um, I'm sharing their experiences. So it makes me happy to know that there's so many people benefiting from these uh, tips. So if, if spicy foods called ulcers, why do people sell it? Why is there hot sauces? You know, why do chilies exist? You know, if they, if, they, if they cause serious pain and cause you ulcers, the, the, the UK government, well, in the UK, they wouldn't fucking sell it at all. So it's just, True. it's just, it's just insanity. I just don't <laughs> understand how people's minds work. So I think if you are pregnant and you're in labor and you eat lots of spicy food that gives you bad diarrhea, I can imagine your intestines moving yeah. and like affecting your uterus to contract. Maybe it can like if you if you if you want to explain it, but to start the labor, uh, spicy food. Uh. Yeah, the baby's just like, oh fuck, yes, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I like you were saying with your comments, though. It, it makes me laugh because I was reading comments like, and this is why I don't trust doctors. I was like, hold on, Susan. You know, exactly. <laughs> this guy's gone and he's, he's studied medicine. He knows exactly, he's done his research for making his videos. He knows what he's on about. Just because your mom told you something when you were six, I don't mind. It's bloody, I'm going to trust this guy. <laughs> Jesus. So, and in this pandemic, majority of like people, like don't trust doctors anymore they think you are there to kill them and fake pandemic and work with the government and bill gates paying us and i'm like who's supposed to pay me pfizer <laughs> who where is who are they I love, it. I love these it's why everyone's going oh it's a worldwide conspiracy to lower the population like our governments can't get along for world peace let alone get along to kill everyone Plus, plus Boris Johnson's one is like his eighth kid now. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, he's trying to populate as much as he fucking can with Tory scum. Anyway, sorry. Um, that's, that's, that's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. That's a, that's another conversation for another time. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> um, but did you ever think that doing the, the myth busting and stuff that would, as, it would escalate as much as it has? Mm-hmm. Well, my first one was a pregnancy one, and it just like, like Exploded. went viral. Yeah. Like I, I was looking at my, sc- I take screenshots time to time. I went from like fifty thousand to like one hundred and twenty thousand or something, and then, and then I was like three hundred thousand followers by December, and so and I started doing my medical myths. I have like nine videos of medical myths. I did three medical myths, and within a few weeks, I was like five hundred thousand. And yeah, so majority of my, I get most of my followers through my medical meds because it's quick, it's interesting, there's explanations and all the haters boost my videos even more, you know, like who said no pain, no gain is wrong. I'm like, okay. (laughs) So have have any of your peers ever said anything to you about these videos, the people you work with? So my, 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 peer, my colleagues at work used to like make fun of me, <laughs> but, uh, but now who's, look who's having interviews, who's working with WHO, who's been on articles and newspaper and TV and... This guy right here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is it them? Nope. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you? Nope. <laughs> you? Nope. <laughs> Oh, phenomenal. So at the same sorry. time, your daughter must think you're the coolest person on the planet now. She always like like whenever I said I'm famous, I have one million, one and a half million, whatever, she's like, 
Remember who started this? Who told you about this? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I like I that kid. I like that kid. That's good. So every interview, <laughs> when they ask me, I'm like, I'm famous because of her. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. She sounds like an absolute hero. She is a genuine legend for bringing you, you know, mm-hmm. bringing the world to your attention. The, the world, the att- world's attention to you is what I'm trying to say. My yeah, words would have come really. up my face then. I was like, I think I was th- talking <laughs> faster. I was I thinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how how did you get into the British Medical Journal? Then? Did they approach you just because of TikTok? So or- this is a very interesting story. So I think somewhere in March or April. So I have, so you know, the email that you get sent me, it goes to my account, the business, the business account. Yeah. And it's my secondary account. So I don't really check it or, or, or before I didn't used to check it that often before. So I was going through it in April and I see there was like an email from like a month and a half, like, before, like in January or February uh, from uh, British, from British Medical Journal, uh, wanting to to interview me to to publish an article on doctors and TikTok, and they wanted an interview on the same day. That's like two months later. I'm reading it, and I was so heartbroken. I was so heartbroken. You have like no clue. It's like it's like GQ coming to you, and you like <laughs> miss it completely, you know. <laughs> So I, I replied, I'm, I'm really sorry, I missed the email, I um, apologize, whatever. She's like, no worries, it's okay. Hopefully in the future, we're going to um, work together. And this is the article. I didn't want to open it because it's going to make me hurt more. So after like 30 minutes, I open it and I'm reading it. And I see there's my name there, the last two lines is about me. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so it was a good surprise i mean british medical journal is is huge it's big that's so they just mentioned mentioned like few doctors like i was like one of one of three and they said i'm from south africa and doing this and i'm talking about hiv covid women's health on my tiktok so it, it, it feels good just to be on it that's, That's really cool that even if they didn't get the interview with you, they're like, we're still going to include this guy. Yes, yes. And that's framed on your wall. <laughs> <laughs> so I, the one thing I love about your TikTok as well is, you know, you touch on so many different topics, like you said, like from mental health to the, there's ones about video games. I'm pretty certain I watched ones about masturbation as well. I was like... And again, all the way to COVID, where do you get the ideas and how do you decide what topics you're going to cover? You know, as you mentioned earlier, medicine is like a huge, um, like so many specialities. Obviously, I don't really go into specialized topics. Like I have like two videos on endometriosis and PCOS, like humans. So I just make videos raising awareness of if you have these symptoms, it could be this, your doctor. But uh, with the myth myth busting, um, I realized people like to know things that they can relate to. So uh, if if I talk about periods, it's like half of the population gets periods, so they're gonna they're gonna watch watch it and go viral. Talk about diabetes, for example, then it's gonna be less. I try to debunk like it's like I need to sit sometimes, like have this me alone thinking of what interesting topics I can talk about. What are the myths that even I grew up with? So, yeah, so I do my research and I, if I find enough points, then I write them down. Then I go and read the latest articles on those topics. Like I wanted to make a myth about uh, stress. And I know that stress, stress doesn't call gray hair. But in fact, the research recently said that yes, stress can cause gray hair. Or stress, stress doesn't cause miscarriage. But then latest research says chronic stress can cause miscarriage. So I'm like, oh my video here, my video goes away, you know. <laughs> so I have to do lots of research. Even after I find the points, I have to like fact check them with the latest information out there. So it's uh, yeah, it's it, it's a process. 
they're not surprised to burn out if you're doing your job doing your and then job. doing TikTok as well and then having to do all the research for it before you make the videos to decide what you want to do for it. They're researching it, then it gets it debunked when you're like, oh, like you say about stress, then you're like, oh, it could be this, this, then you're like, ah, oh, shit, it actually does. God damn it. Now we're going back to the drawing board. Oh, I've got work tomorrow, so I'm going to bed. So I'll do that tomorrow. So you're going to work, and then you're like, right, cool. So let's do this topic this time. It's just, I can't imagine. You, I, do, do you sleep? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> I can't fine. remember the last time I got more than an hour. <laughs> And obviously you're a family man very as well. Important. Sorry? And you're a family man as well. Yeah, true. So um, um, it's, it's difficult to like balance everything. And I think one of the, my main problems is that I, I sleep late sometimes. So that ruins my next day. So if I sleep like seven hours or less, then you're exhausted the next day. But then you can't really function properly. And this goes on and on and on. So I'm trying to sleep at least eight hours such as i can function the next day or be have some willpower so i can do something useful um i'm taking like a mini break from tiktok i mean i have been so i haven't um when you know when you don't sleep and you're tired you can't be creative that's why you have so many mixed videos that i've been posting recently so my plan is um i, I will be collaborating with the who to make videos on mental health. Hopefully I'm gonna meet them this week, talk with them, and in the next month, month and a half, I'll be posting 10 videos on mental health. I think you were talking about um, like domestics and stuff like that as well. Yes, I was like, 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 I didn't know stalking is part of domestic violence, for example. So, so yeah, like, People who get stalked and all the things they can go and, and open a case of domestic violence against their those per that person. So uh, to educate people to be more aware, like when you are once, for example, once you're in a toxic relationship, uh, you have no clue it's toxic. You know, you only realize once you come out, and that affects your mental health. Um, I'm just giving myself ideas. I didn't know I'm gonna. I mean, it's, it it would be good to talk about it. You know? Oh, hundred percent. <laughs> I made one or two videos on the relationships and people are like, are you a doctor or your life coach or relationship uh, expert? I'm like, I can research stuff. I can also I can research things. I can have life experience, you know. It's a thing, it's a thing called education. Where you can educate yourself, you know what I mean? You can research. Exactly. Oh, cool. So, guys, what I've read here is I've, I've been doing some research, taking me a while, and this, this, and this. And then people have to say yeah, penises yeah. about it. I don't understand. <laughs> I've done some oh. proper research. I read some Facebook articles. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what you're saying is very poignant to what's going on in this time of the life because a lot of people have struggled with domestic situations because of lockdown and, you know, being stuck in the houses with people and whatnot. So it's very relative to what we're talking about in the world at the moment. So yeah, it's a great yeah. thing to talk yeah. about. I can't remember yeah. just use words. Poignant. I sounded quite intelligent. Man. Quite proud of myself. <laughs> um, there is a video I saw, and I'm very intrigued by this conversation that I'd like to have right now. I imagine you've been asked this question millions of times. Things that have been removed from people. So, Dr. Salah, <laughs> there was a video of a guy who put a bottle that he apparently fell on. Uh, that he had inserted into himself, obviously, at some point. What have, the, have there been any other really weird stories or any other weird items that people have decided to insert into their rectal cavity? Not in the rectal, but I once removed a body spray can. Yeah. It was, it was stuck in the in vagina. The... Oh, my days. So, I mean, the patient came in. I saw the folder, I saw the complaint, she laid down, I took the took it out. She we should we like shook her head, thank you, thank you. And we we hardly like, we didn't even speak a word. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do you say in that sort of situation? It's a bit like, uh yeah, I'm I'm not even I'm gonna just <laughs> you know, you, you can keep that. You can just keep that. I'm gonna <laughs> 
Are you done? Sure. Sorry. Got out. So yeah, that's uh, that's my experience. Wow. And I, I take it a lot of the stories are, oh, I fell on it. Oh, I just happened to be upright on a chair and I sat down with no <laughs> underwear on whatsoever. I take it those are the stories. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm I'm sure. Like if happens, I mean, like I can't imagine somebody going there and be honest about it. So probably it's an embarrassing thing. Yeah, true. I mean, I think I think because I'm a bit too honest for my own good, so I'd probably like. Yeah, um, I tried to sit. I put an umbrella up my ass and I can't get it out. Could you like help me out? Here? <laughs> Um, I don't know why I thought it was a good idea, to be honest with you. Um, at least the handle's still there. I probably just don't myself, to be honest with you. But uh... <laughs> You'll be a fun patient to have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't, I don't like the idea. I, don't, I just can't really lie. So I'd rather just be like, yeah, really sorry about that. Um, I, I think I've killed Jamie. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I was playing with Toy Army and I thought I'd put him down my cock for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> so Come on. I thought I could piss him. Sorry, Doctor. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm going too far now. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I've been, I've, I've heard it all. I bet you've heard worse. <laughs> oh. oh, but do you have any plans for future videos for TikTok when you feel like getting back on there? Any content you'd like, to, new things you'd like to cover and whatnot? Um, mental health is the one that we spoke about. I also still need to, so I am. With, with WHO, we are a group of healthcare workers that we try to fight the misinformation of COVID. And I feel like I haven't been doing much. I try to comment, correct people, have other videos that they post. But me, myself, I, I'd like to post more about COVID. And one thing I'd like to do is that to have co-host lives with these COVID experts. And so, so my followers can ask the questions and their followers can ask me questions. That would be a good thing to answer the questions. Like, so the, the, the this anti-vax uh, propaganda, anti-vax people are like they're also like organized. They go to life of my friends talking about COVID, answering question, and like they complain, complain, ban they get banned for nudity or something. So it's uh, it's organized those people. So they always keep attacking, trying to. It's. I never knew that this anti-vax propaganda are like properly funded, organized. I'm sure they, I'm sure they have meetings, who to attack, what information to spread. It, 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 no one talks about 5G. 5G was so old now. Every month there's like a new conspiracy theory. They have to keep up because once you get debunked, there's a new one needs to come. New one needs to come. So I'm glad Facebook and all this, like even TikTok, they're starting to closed on like uh, this big account to spread to spread uh, who spread misinformation like i know instagram and facebook they have removed few accounts that were like big on misinformation it's a bit late but i mean yeah better late than never they say yeah true i mean obviously it's a bit difficult when the, the former president of the united states was all about that as well saying you can inject bleach into yourself and that sort of thing like just uh, well, I mean, the state is a different thing. State is like if you pro vaccine, you're a Democrat. People accuse me of being Democrat. You voted for Biden. I'm like, Biden? I'm not even living in your continent. <laughs> <no?"> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, what do you think South Africa is? <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell. Yeah, but the fact that they were funded, that anti vax are, are funded as well, is mental to me. Absolutely oh, mental. No, of course. All business money. I mean, if you go read about it, it's like much more complicated than those ten trolls that come to my uh, videos. So they are they are proper organization. Even South Africa, they are like an NGO that's properly anti-vax and yeah. It's just mind. It's mind blowing. It's just mind and it's costing life. Like people are like dying. Like obviously, you, they scare you to take the vaccine, and then if you don't take the vaccine, and next day you are in the ICU or God forbid, you know, you like you died, and it's a, uh, it's, I don't know. I genuinely saw a video. I genuinely, genuinely saw a video of a guy in America who had COVID, who was he was currently suffering in hospital, and the news team were talking to him, and they said, "So now are you gonna get vaccinated?" He went, "No, no, no." I, I thought. I, I, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Wait a minute. 
So you don't want to get back. You want to get that again, do you? Like you'd just rather die or suffer or get long COVID or whatever. You'd rather be suffering like this than get vaccinated and carry on living your life. And just so you know, they get treated with drugs that are not FDA approved. They have like there's many drugs that are emergency use authorization they have. Emergency use authorization means it was approved for an emergency and for mass production. Doesn't mean it's not fully approved or blah, blah, whatever. So the same guy who is saying vaccine is not fully approved, he was probably probably treated in the hospital with not fully approved drugs also. It's it's crazy like that. You can't, you can't logic, you can't like... Uh, no, it's just I, I saw that video, I saw that old man in the hospital. No, I'm not taking the vaccine. I was like, oh, what else? What else can convince this guy? Yeah. Well, you're screwed then, son. <laughs> See you later. Cheers. It's absolutely. You had a but, good run. <laughs> but what are you saying with doing those videos, like those live videos and stuff, with the vaccine rollout in South Africa coming now, like to the younger generation, that could do so much good convincing these people who are on the fence and undecided about when they want to take it. See, you know, to, you're doing the Lord's work with doing what you're doing because you're helping you're helping save lives. Using TikTok, you're helping save lives. And that's incredible as far as I'm concerned. Bow at your feet, sir. Bow at your feet. Thank you so much for everything that you do. Thank you. Um, I try. <laughs> well, you're smashing up the park. So let's be quite honest. Um, not only are you doing it in the hospital, but you're doing it, as Jamie said, you know, on in the big centre stage, basically, on social media so that everybody can see it. So, yeah, I encourage and urge everyone to go and follow you, but we'll get to that later at the end. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But with your videos as well, you don't just do... I mean, they are obviously all medical-based, but you did one on video games as well. So obviously more non-medical-based, I suppose, uh, in the sense of like... Um, Oh my god, I can't remember them now. Um, like video games don't cause like FIFA COD and some else don't cause Yes. I did a video on on gaming benefits. Did you see it? It had gaming benefits, benefits of gaming. You have better coordination, you have this and that. Because I think a few four or five years ago I went to a course teach us surgical skills. And there was a laparoscopy. So we had to do all the handles and there was a box, handles in the box, and you had to like catch things and pass them to each other while holding the handles from outside. It's like laparoscopic surgery when you like do it, and you go like to the stomach and like you move things around. So the prof asked me, Are you a surgeon? I said, No, I play PlayStation. <laughs> 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 so the rest true is proven that video gaming improves your coordination. Wow. So hand and eye coordination. So I knew that one. I did more research and I found out a few other tips and I added them. And I think overnight I got thousands of gamers following me. It was cool. Then I did a few more gaming videos. I, I, I'm myself a gamer. I play like an hour or two every day. So I, I've got a reason now. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, can I can attest to this though, because my son, when he was young, we brought him Minecraft. Because and like writing on signs and stuff like that helped improve his spelling and do stuff like he was reading stuff and he reads way beyond his age level now. And because of playing wow. Minecraft, he's got a massive interest in geology. He loves like stones and crystals and stuff like that through play, playing Minecraft that, that encouraged him to do all these things. And I find it fascinating. I, I find it amazing. I really do. I was like, that's great. True. It's, it's amazing. Like video gaming in, you know, it can really help. It's weird, but yeah. Yeah, that's what that's why I said healthy, healthy gaming benefits. Because if you if you game for eight hours and sleep late and don't say hi to your family, you know that that's not gaming. That's why <laughs> that's I had to helpful. make another video. To I think the video was about um, what is healthy gaming. Okay. Like put your partner or family priority, sleep enough, snack on like healthy uh, foods. Yeah, that, 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 that one didn't go viral, you know? <laughs> <laughs> of course it didn't. 
And like, ah, oh, he's just contradicted himself here. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> Amazing. Uh, Tom, before we start wrapping up, have you got any more questions you wanted to ask? Yeah, well, I was just going to say, you know, again, thank you for absolutely everything that you do. We really appreciate it. You know, even though you are on a separate continent, you're still spreading the word to the masses and we appreciate you. And thank you so much for coming to do this with us. Did you ever think, though, like I said before, that things would ever amount to where you've got to now, like working with the World Health Organization, getting a British, the British Medical Journal, that sort of thing, I ever think that would be your life? Never. I, I was... As I said, I was just a norm. I'm still a normal person, but like, I would just work home, work home. Now I think, um, like I, I I can even Google myself. I was googling myself the other day, um, in some Chinese article, in Hungarian article, in Portuguese article. It's American, South African. It's and and the fact that I'm not only only working with WHO. Recently, the Department of Health in, South, in our South Africa, they found me, discovered me. So they also like trying to use me, not use my platform, like to try to educate people. So I had a meeting. My first meeting was last week, and they wanna like to like they wanna know how we can educate or bust these COVID myths. So it's uh, I'm getting to know more people, more network. And that's my goal. Like, I think one interview to ask me, what's your goal? I'm like, to do what I'm doing at a global level. Yeah. If I can, like, work with WHO, that would be a dream because they are also public health. I'm doing it, like, one million, whatever million. If I can do it at a larger scale, that would be the goal to impact as many lives as possible. I think if you keep going the way you're going, I think you're going to get there. So more power to you, sir. Keep going. Keep smashing on the park keep putting them videos up. I love it. I can't wait. I, I wish you all the best, man. Seriously, it's going to be amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Before we let you get out of here, though, we do like to play a little game with our guests, if you're willing to play. It's sure. literally, we call it the quick fire round. It's literally five questions and you answer them as quick as you can. And they're all about you, so you don't really need to think too much. You don't need to do any research for these ones. It's fine. <laughs> Okay, hopefully it's easy one. <laughs> well, let's go with this one. Your favourite pizza topping? Pineapple. Oh. I knew it's controversial. You know, you know, yeah. I know, I know what to say to make people comment. <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenal. <laughs> How do you take your tea slash coffee? I don't drink tea or coffee. Fair enough. And you do as much as you can with no caffeine. I'm even more impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Zombie. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? Flying. Yes. That's my always my answer. answer. Strong. I was going to say in being invisible, but that's uh, uh, nah, not, uh, not, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Who would play you in the movie of your life? My my movie is only chapter one. Can we like ask it, ask the same question maybe next year? <laughs> yeah, let's do that. <laughs> yeah. Um. I don't know who who do you give me choices? Joaquin Phoenix. I don't know who that is. The Joker. Isn't he dead? No. Or the other guys. <laughs> So you're thinking Heath Ledger. You're thinking Heath Ledger. Ledger. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Ledger. Uh, Chris Pratt. I like, Robert, I like Robert De Niro, but he's too old for me. <laughs> <laughs> Demar? Let's have Robert De Niro. Have De Niro. Have De Niro. Or Adam Sandler. Have young De Niro. It's fine. Adam Sandler. <laughs> yeah, young De Niro. Young De Niro. Yeah, let's young go, De Niro. Let's go young De Niro. Yeah. Young De Niro. That works. <laughs> And last but not least, a piece of advice you would give to young doctor. Hey, I thought you were going to tell me, give a piece of advice to people. Okay, young doctor. So young I, I young would you. Say, young me, to never give up on your dreams and to don't procrastinate. Take the first step. I mean, I never knew I can go so far. 
I actually, on my next video, I have made but haven't posted it. Last year, September, I made a video and it says tele teleporting. So I raised my hand and I teleport to 2021. And then my daughter changed my profile to make it 1.7 million followers. And then the background comes and I'm like, yeah, 1.7 and I'm verified. I had 50,000 followers back then in September 5th. And now I, I'm, I made, I, I put that video and next to it, after it, I come and I'm like, look, 1.7, never give up on your dreams. You know, like if you, one main advice, hard work will always pays off. Always, always. Talent, no talent, talent is, I mean, it's good, but if you work hard, you can be talented. Always take first step. I, I don't know. You can you, you can see that I don't speak in my videos. It's maybe because I'm a bit insecure about my accent, my English, whatever. It's spot on. Exactly, exactly. That's that's why that's my. I need to get over this. I know why it's holding me back. I'm sure I can do a lot more if I speak in my videos. So I've been procrastinating. I'm like I was like at fifty thousand, I'll speak. A hundred thousand, five hundred thousand. One million, million and a half. Maybe next month I'll just. Who cares? Exactly. I don't know. I just do it. Don't stop doing the no thing though, because that's perfect. But just oh, don't no. wait, don't wait for two million. Don't wait till next week. Just do it. Just do it now. Just put a video up. You don't need to wait. You don't need to set yourself. You know, it's good to set yourself goals and stuff. But I'd just be like, I'm gonna speak tomorrow. Fuck him. I'm just gonna put it out there. <laughs> it's what I sound. Your English is absolutely fantastic. It really is incredible. So you've got nothing to worry about. Don't be so hard on yourself. You know, you're smashing yourself apart. Look, look at you. You're on 1.7 million followers, for God's sake. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, give, a, give us a couple of them, please. Yeah. <laughs> Don't. Um, <laughs> it's just quick. not Susan. Seriously, Doctor, you are inspiring the world, not just a nation, not just a country, not just the continent. You're inspiring the world, you know, spreading the message and... Long may it continue. I hope that people find you, follow you. You know, where exactly can they find you? I'm at Dr. Sia, Dr. D O C T O R dot S I Y A on Facebook, on at Facebook, on TikTok and Instagram. So I'm, I'm posting my videos also on Instagram. So for people who are not on TikTok, so they can also, and I've built a small community. I was, 4,000 followers two months ago. Now I'm almost 200,000 on Instagram. So it's uh, it's good to, so I can reach as many people as possible. That's yeah. basically my goal, yeah. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I really hope everyone who listens to this needs to go find you and just watch everything, love everything, and just give you all the love, praise and support that you so rightly deserve, sir, because you are doing an unbelievable job and to keep it up. Keep it up and thank you for everything that you do. Thank you. Completely agree. That's, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for doing this. It's meant the world. But still, <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure. We've really appreciated your time. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, and we will talk again soon. So we'll let you know when this is released as well. Thank, thank you very you, much. Sir. Have a nice evening. You too, sir. You take care. Thank, you. thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, bye you. Bye. thank you for having me. Bye bye. bye.